Mr. Tony. Welcome home, sir. Your mother's in the conservatory. Cynthia, I'd like you to meet my wife, Marianne. Your wife? Congratulations, Mrs. Blackwell. Thank you. How do you do? You ready? <laughs> no. Neither am I. Discharge those other people. Oh, I think they're go? fascists. Do you really? Yes. I don't think a lot of Hello, you two. Tony! <laughs> Hello. Oh. Hello. Hello. Oh, Mary Congratulations. Ann, look how beautiful. Congratulations. How Please beautiful let me kiss the bride. Oh, Brad. Mm. Oh, oh that's girl, all I'm that's so all happy. happy. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. No, Brad, please. All right. Look at them. Marriage really agrees with you. Yes. Thank you. We stayed in a lovely place. Tony found a cottage in Vermont. Oh, Lake Dunmore, it is lovely, isn't it? Will you stay for dinner? Oh, I'm sorry, Mother, but we... Uh... Oh, I'd love to. We can see your friends tomorrow. He's told me all about your collection. I'm longing to see it. Of course, I insist. You're one of us now. Oh, and one day, very soon, all of it will belong to you, Tony. I want you to see everything, and I want you to know everything. Well, I guess we could stay for dinner. Oh, good. Brad, will you join us? Delighted. Oh, good. Well, the grand tour starts in five seconds. What would you like to see first? Oh, uh, the whole bike. Well, your friend Anton taught you all about drawing. Oh, that's a good choice. <laughs> right this way, Mrs. Blackwell. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Brad, Brad, you heard him. Mm -hmm. He didn't stand no. He's happy. He's happy, Brad. I've yeah. done well for my son. I only wish you could have got everything you planned on. Of course I did. Well. He has the wife he wanted. He's happier now than all the years in Paris, and nothing can happen to change it, Brad. Well, I give you a lot of credit, Kate. Putting Tony ahead of the deal you really wanted. Oh, but I got that as well. Kate, may I remind you that it was the Wyatt Company you, you were after? I mean, Hoffman was an also ran from the beginning. You just used him as a stocking horse for Wyatt. Come on, damn it, Kate, admit it. It was Lucy that you wanted for Tony. You made sure she got up to Maine first. They had dinner together. I mean, Mary, Mary Ann had to come in the back door. Tony double-crossed you, my dear. Brad, you disappoint me. Since when do I leave things to chance? I had a complete report done on Lucy Wyatt. It didn't matter to me that she'd married that Russian duke. I could have accepted that as a girlish indiscretion. Child had a hysterectomy only two years ago. Marianne could give Tony a son. Do you mean you pushed him toward Lucy knowing that he would do anything not to marry? Well, I counted on your help too, Brad. You and Tony have always been fellow rebels. There are times when you're very angry with me. You try to be vindictive, but you just haven't the heart for it, Brad. Oh, no, let me tell you what I want to do with Hoffman Company. I don't want to be late for dinner. I think electronics is the coming thing of the age. What we have here, madam, are some of the more minor Renaissance singers, such as Da Vinci, Titian, and Gaspacho. <laughs> Used to keep them in my bathroom, but the steam from the shower made the paint run. Dude, don't be sacrilegious. Oh, you think this junk is something? You ought to see what we got in the basement. But whenever a prince or a duke or something used to go bankrupt, Mother would shoot over to you over the pickup truck to the palace. <laughs> Tony! What's the matter? You all right? Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have called out like that. I'm all right, really. Well, what happened? You, you were frightened. It must be the excitement. I couldn't see for a second. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine. I don't know why I called out like that. It was stupid. You better go downstairs. Your mother be wondering what's happened to us. Mother. And it had never happened before. No. Yeah. Have you ever been in hospital, Marianne? Yes. Twice when I was at school. Oh, what for? Well, the first time was pneumonia. Oh, you picked a good one there. We can cure that. <laughs> and how about the second time? It was a hockey match. Mm -hmm. I was running, and suddenly I woke up in hospital. Yeah? 
Very dramatic, yeah. You ever find out why? The doctor said it was an adolescent glandular upset. Oh, that's, that's very dramatic. <laughs> you, you, you remember that, do you? <laughs> oh, yes, I yeah, was... Lie down, would you, please? I was very cross. There was a young woman of 16, and he called me an adolescent. Yes, <laughs> hardly what you'd call diplomatic, yeah. huh? <laughs> But uh, can you try to remember, too, uh, how you felt when you woke up? I didn't want them to tell my father, because he'd worry. No, naturally. But, uh, I mean, physically. Oh. Do you feel any weakness on one side or the other? Oh, you ask all the right questions. My right arm was a little weak. But it only lasted a few days and it never came back. Hmm. Never came back. Hmm. Well, you're precious fine. That's the first piece of good news. Am I all right, then? Oh, I'm sure you are. But uh, when Kate Blackwell asks me questions, I just better be ready with some answers. So I'm going to have you go see an associate of mine. There are just a few tests I'd like him to run. Well, we've solved the mystery. Medically, it's called a berry aneurysm, something quite common in women. A small artery up here in the brain broke and shed a small amount of blood, and it was that pressure which caused the blurred vision and the headaches. Fortunately, these things are usually self-healing. Is it likely to happen again? No, very unlikely. Unless you're planning to take up hockey again, you can lead a perfectly normal life. Tony and I like to swim and play tennis. Mm, unless you overdo whatever exercise you do, uh, no problem. Oh, Dr. Harley, I haven't slept a wink since I did those tests. I can't thank you enough. Now, uh, there's you just know. one thing. If you're uh, planning to have children, perhaps it would be wiser to adopt. <clears throat> said I was all right. And you are. But uh, in pregnancy, the blood volume increases enormously. And especially in the last six or eight weeks, well, the pressure really goes up. And uh, with your history, the risk would be unacceptably high. Not only dangerous, but possibly fatal. So you let me know, and we'll make some inquiries about an adoption. Very curious, man. John Harley seems to be such an alarmist. At least he was in my case. He had me dead in my surgery three years ago. Oh? Uh -huh. You're feeling all right now, aren't you? Yes. Are you having any more of those dizzy spells? No. So great. Marianne, I am so glad that you and Tony are together. You are what I wanted for Tony all the way along. I love you, you know, and I'm really glad that you're part of our family. Okay, thank you. I am so happy. What is it, darling? You don't seem very happy. Something bothering you that you're not telling me? Mary Ann. I am already pregnant. But that's what you wanted. But I can't have the baby. Dr. Harley said I might die, and I wanted to tell him it was too late that I was already pregnant, but I couldn't. You're the only one I can talk to. I don't know what to do. Oh, no, you mustn't. Absolutely not. It would be too great a risk, wouldn't it? Well, it might be. Every woman that gets pregnant takes a risk. This is different. Yes, it is. I suppose in life we have to decide which risks are worth taking. We do so want a baby. You're right. Some risks are worth taking. Please don't tell Tony what Dr. Harley said. Of course I would if you don't want me to. I pray the word it'll be our secret. Oh. 
Should I have told Tommy? How could I? He'd never have let me keep the baby. Kate was right. It's my decision. Nothing will happen. It can't. We're so happy. Oh, God. Please don't let anything bad happen to us. Well, I've got some news for you, Mrs. Blackwell. You're going to have twins. Oh, Mr. Blackwell, you forgot your little dog. Oh, thank you very much. I think your friend is having a baby. Tony! Did your mother arrange that for you, too? Tony, stop. Is it for your baby? Yes. Congratulations. Well, they're not here yet, but any day now. It's going to be twins. How lovely for you. Good luck, Tony. Let's go there. I guess your mother bought them for you. Right, Blackwell? What's your no. problem? Not mine, Sonny. Yours. But I guess it's not so bad having a mother who gives you anything you want. What's up, Penny? You want a beautiful model to sleep with? She buys you one. You want an exhibition in Paris? The old lady buys you one, too. That's not true. Isn't it? Doesn't he know? Know what? It's not important. Danny, we have to go. Your mother paid the gallery. Ask her. Go on. He's lying, isn't he? No. But it doesn't matter. Well, he liked your work. He would have given you a showing anyway. He told me. Tell him about the art critic. Maybe it's time he stopped living in a dream world. My mother asked do so to come. That's all it was. She has friends. Yeah, friends at the bank. She paid him to come. But he hated my work. He never would have done that, even if she paid him. Put the man out of his misery once and for all. Tell him. No, he didn't. And you so told your mother that you could have become a great artist. She paid him? To destroy me? No, not to destroy. She thought she was doing it to give you a better life. For you. Mr. Blackwell, I've got a message for you. Your wife's in the hospital. They took her there a few hours ago. I'm losing pressure. Like 
Ben, you sure? Ben, go for it. Yes, sure, sure, sure. It's all right, Tony. It's all right, son. It's all right. Oh, Tony. Tony. It breaks my heart. really so wanted those children. I tried to talk her out of it, but she wouldn't listen to me. Well, why would you want to talk her out of it? She knew that if she went ahead with that pregnancy, that it could kill her. What? You mean Marianne didn't tell you? But, but your mother knew. Didn't she say nothing about it? Marianne had a congenital weakness that we had warned her about, and she died of a cerebral hemorrhage. Oh. What did my mother have to do with this? Oh, I, I guess she thought I was just an alarmist, and she advised Marianne to go ahead with it. Now, Tony, Tony, I've seen, I've seen the twins. They really are the most beautiful. All right, sir. Uh, would you make me a cup of coffee, please? Yes, sir. Uh, no sugar. Yes, sir. sanitarium. It's all been kept quiet. Oh. Brad saw to everything, John. and we've brought in some very good people to help him. John, why? Oh. Now, why did he try to kill me, John? Brad, you need some rest. Why? And we, we will talk later. Why? 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 Kate. <gasps> Kate. Marianne, 
is dead. And he holds you responsible. Mm. But the babies are alive. Two little girls. Grandmother said we shouldn't. We might fall. You're scared. You're scared. No, I'm not. Show me then. That's right. I'm not sure. All right, I'll show you. Stay there. Hurry. Eve, I can't do it. Alexandra, don't be silly. Of course you can. Eve, no. Don't, please. Want to be my sister? You've got to do what I do. Eve, no! You're scared. Stop her! Do you want to hurt yourself? Alexandra, get off that banister at once. Do you hear me? We were only playing, Solange. Do you know what would happen if you fell from here? Oh, if your grandmother hears of this, she will be very, very angry. Nothing happened. And we were all very lucky, weren't we? I'm tired of this game anyway. Oh, Alexandra, your sister likes to take risks. She likes adventure. But you don't have to follow her in everything she does. Promise me that you will be more careful. Eve doesn't mean anything. Well, let us say that sometimes she doesn't think of the consequences. I'll be careful, I promise. Good. Now you go back to your books. And then after dinner, we can go to the cinema. Thank you, Solange. You've been listening. Yes. Yes, and I'm very disappointed. Do you think I'm mean to even Alexandra? No. I was going to ask you to the movies. Good. I've been waiting. You have? Of course. That's a very nice thing to say. Why don't you come with us, and then after we bring the girls home, we can have a nice dinner somewhere. I'm afraid that I would disappoint you. How would you be doing that? By boring you. I'm going to tell you what I think. I've been here quite a few years now. And I know you. You're a very kind man. I can see that sometimes you're very sad. Or you can say funny things, and you can also become very, very angry. I think it's time I told you that I like you. I like you very much. You are a fine man. Keep Blackwell's brought ready for competition. The girls are natural. Where's your sister? She's getting a horse ready. Uh, you better go give her a hand. Yes, sir. It's all for today, Eve. the girl with the pink ribbon. But I don't need that to tell which is Alexandra. That's just because you saw my sister outside. Here, Tommy, let me give you a could hand. Could you help me, please? Be with you in a minute. Are you going to be all right? Yes, thanks. Here, I'll help. Thanks. Okay? Okay. Well, Alexandra, let's see what you can do. Go on. Okay, let's go see. Come on, 
Alexandra. I'll get the horse. Somebody oh, call Dr. Wilson at the infirmary. Hurry! You've been a very lucky young woman, Alexandra. Apart from a few bruises and a bump on the head, I can't find anything else. Is she going to be all right, Dr. Wilson? As right as rain. I see no reason why she shouldn't be back in class tomorrow. But she could have been killed, Mrs. Chandler. Well, it's all over. <laughs> yes, Mr. Davis. Mrs. Chandler, I know why the horse threw her. Look at this blood on the blanket. How did it get there? Look at this. It was underneath the saddle. When her weight came down on his back, it tore into him. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any idea who could have done this to your sister? I can't tell on anybody. You mean you know who did it? I'm not a squealer. It's not a question of daddy. Your sister could have been very seriously hurt, and the girl who did it has to be punished so that it won't happen again. You do understand that, don't you? I suppose, but it wasn't one of the girls. Well, then who did it? It was Tommy. Are you sure? Yes, ma'am. I saw him. I thought he was just tightening up the cinch. I'm sure he didn't mean any harm. Alexandra bosses him around a lot, and I guess he wanted to pay her a lesson. Oh, Mrs. Chandler, I wish you hadn't made me tell you. I don't want to get anybody in any trouble. Now, now, it's all right, Eve. You did right to tell me. You just forget everything. I'll take care of this. It's very good of you to come with me. I don't know if it will do any good, but I can't just let him sit there without trying. You're very fond of him, aren't you? <laughs> Known him since he was born. And his mother? Longer yet? <sighs> well, I knew sooner or later that would come. <laughs> but don't forget that I come from a country where affairs of the heart are a national occupation. Oh, you have that look when she enters the room. You do know that if she finds out that we're having an affair, you will be away from the children permanently. I don't want to leave them. Not yet. There's something very, very wrong there. What do you mean? I think... I... I think that Eve is trying to hurt Alexandra. Really, Solange, you're letting your, your imagination run away with you. I'm telling you, she hates her sister. It's true, she hates it that Alexandra looks like her and dresses like her and, and steals part of her grandmother's love, which she feels belongs to her. No, it can't be true. It's too horrible. There is a devil in that child. One day you will find out. But I won't be the one to tell her father. Poor man. He lives with his own devil. Tony. Tony. Hello. How are you feeling? Uh, you, you have to keep him like this all the time. We have to. Or he tear us in the place apart. Mr. Blackwell. Yeah, um... I am Solange Duna, governess to Eve and Alexandra. I thought perhaps you would like me to tell you about them. They're very beautiful children. Their tutor tells me they're very bright. Oh, but I've known that for a long time. Oh, I... I hope you will be able to see them soon. You would be so proud of them. Yeah. Would you like that, Tony? Because I mean, it could be arranged. Yes, perhaps next month for their birthday. That's all right. I'm not afraid. I think we'd better take him back. Oh. Oh, the poor man. So stupid. No, 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 no. Their birthday. Wife died. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. It's all right. Take 
Steve, darling. Oh, my sweetheart. What's the matter, Eve? What's wrong? I'm sorry. What's there to be sorry about? It's gonna sound silly. Well, I won't know that until I've heard it, will I? It's the girls at school. Girls at school? Oh, now, darling, what do the girls at school do? Do they tease you? No, they're very nice. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that. Last week, Alex and I had a sleepover date with Jessica Morgan. It was such fun. Mr. and Mrs. Morgan played music for us, and we all danced. When we went to sleep, Mrs. Morgan kissed us goodnight. Oh, I wish we could have that every night, but all we have is that nasty old Solange. <laughs> oh, darling, Solange loves you very much. She hates us, especially Alex. She keeps on telling her how terrible she looks, and then she makes fun of both of us. Little rich girls, she calls us. <laughs> but, madame, what have I done to displease you? Nothing, absolutely nothing. I thought you to be complimented for the excellent job you've done with my granddaughters over the years. You've taken on a great responsibility with remarkable devotion. For which I'm being discharged. I'm as sorry about this as you are, but it's time. It's time that I took over the direct responsibility of my granddaughters myself. So I've advised Mr. Rogers to make as generous a settlement as possible. And Solange, I've observed your, your friendship with Brad, and I think it's been good. It's been good for both of you. Thank you, madame, for allowing us to play in your little game. And now that it is time to show us who is the master, you just break us apart. But tell me, what have you achieved? What have you proved? Except that your lover found in me what you were unable to give him. Before we part, I think I'll to warn you. Take care. One of your granddaughters is... One of your granddaughters is a danger to anyone who displeases her. She will not hesitate to do anything to have her way. I will miss you very much. Au revoir, monsieur. I love you, Sophie. you wish to study here. Ballet, singing, science, art, and music. Yes. May I suggest that you concentrate on rather fewer of these subjects while you are here with us. That way you will have the benefit of your teachers. But I want to do them all. I want to be the best of everything. I see. And you, Mademoiselle Alexandre, uh, you have written down an interest in literature. Is that all? For now, Madame Allo, I'm in a hurry. Very well, then. May I welcome you both to our institute and hope that you might be very happy in your years here with us. Thank you, Madame. Uh, one thing more. Tonight, at the ball opening of our school year, we shall expect many guests, the young gentlemen of the Académie Militaire. We shall expect, of course, our young ladies to behave in the proper manner. Uniforms can sometimes be very hard to resist. How glad I am that you came to Lausanne. School will be a wonderful place this year. 
I was warned about you, Renee. You were? Madame Malot said the cadets are not to be trusted. Alexandra, I assure you there's no way I would do it. I really didn't believe her. Can't you ask any better than that? Let's go further into the garden. I want to be alone with you. That's a little more romantic. Five minutes near the fountain. Stupid little boys, every one of them. All I had to do was lift my finger and they would have done anything I wanted. It looks like you were the belle of the ball. They're all fighting to dance with you. I felt sorry for them. Men are fools, Alex. Remember that. A smart woman can control any man. I don't think I want that. Oh, don't you? Who was that young general that was following you around like a puppy? He's sweet, isn't he? And intelligent. Did he try to take off your dress? No. He's not like that. Oh, isn't he? No. Rene is a gentleman. Besides, he's... He's shy. Oh, now we have it. My little sister's in love. I am not. I'm sorry I told you. Did he ask you for a date? Saturday. We're going to see a play. But don't be angry. I'm only teasing. I hope you have a lovely time. Alexandra, one more kiss. I never knew it would be so wonderful. Will I see you tomorrow? If you like. Divine? Oh, it was terrible. You never even bothered to show up. Oh, that's a shame. But I warned you, you have to learn never to trust a man. Maybe something happened to him. Oh, maybe he just found somebody he liked better. Happens all the time. Oh, I know. I wonder what's wrong with me. It's a lie! A dirty, rotten lie! Mademoiselle, when one does not have truth as an ally, it is necessary to have a bookkeeper to keep count of the stories. You have no right to speak to me like this. I have no choice. It is my duty. You're a very clever young woman, but you've not yet learned that men enjoy to speak of their conquests. And since you specialize in military gentlemen, they of all lovers cannot resist boasting of their victories. They're liars, not me. Oh, Mademoiselle, I regret to say that in Lausanne you are as well known as Joan of Arc is in France. My grandmother will hear of this. Naturally, since I shall cable her to tell her of your immediate expulsion. You have no proof of this, you know. If you insist, here is a list of names. This is obviously a plot against my family. Someone is trying to embarrass my grandmother. You are the one that caused that embarrassment, mademoiselle. But out of respect for the lady, I am willing to give you the chance to leave here voluntarily. I am certain that you will be able to create a story for your grandmother. What are you doing? 
I'm leaving. Well, where are you going? I'm going home. In the middle of semester? Why? What happened? I just got fed up, that's all. Alex, don't you see what a waste of time this place is? They treat us like children. It's time we went out into the real world. Well, I, I knew you were bored sometimes, but I thought you really enjoyed it. Enjoyed it? I only stayed because you seem to like it. Well, I, I do like it, but... I'm sorry, Alex. I can't stand it any longer. I have to go home, back to where I really belong, back to New York. Well, have you told Madame Allo? Just a few minutes ago. What did she say? She cried and said, I would look bad for this school, and how can I do such a thing to her? Eva, I'm all mixed up. Oh, don't be. It has anything to do with you. Of course it has. If you're unhappy here, I can't let that separate us. Nothing ever has. Come on, Eve. I won't leave you now. Who wants to go on conjugating old Latin verbs anyway? Who cares about Hannibal and his crazy brother? What's his name? As Durbal. Right. I'm really glad we're going home together. Oh, so am I. I'll tell you what. I'll finish packing and you can call Graham. Tell her we'll be on the plane tomorrow. And we just can't stand this place anymore, okay? I don't think she's gonna like it. Oh, don't worry about the old lady. I've always been able to handle her. Come on. At last, back to civilization. <laughs> You look ravishing. You are exceptionally gallant today. Hmm. Is it the two scotches, or are you preparing me for something? If I'd have wanted my tea leaves red, I'd have taken a gypsy to look. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> But you are a bit obvious at times. Now, what is it? And Bradford, please don't drink anymore. You are picking up the girls this afternoon. When you, when you told me that the girls were coming back, I phoned the school. Oh, why did you do that? I didn't want to upset you, but I have heard things about Eve. Now, it's someone at the club. Uh, he has a daughter at the same school, Kate. She was thrown out. I'd rather not repeat them. It seems by inference that you are. I've been wanting to speak to you about Eve for a very long time. Kate, she's... She's different from Alexandra. Of course she is. She's bright and resourceful and determined to have her own way, and I like that. Alexandra's gentle and kind, and she will run my foundations with compassion and understanding. Suppose you're wrong. Suppose Eve turns out to be a liar, and perhaps worse. How dare you? These things have to be said. All the years we've known each other, it gives me the right. Samaj infected you with her hatred for Eve, didn't she, Brad? Don't you speak about Solange in that way. She cared for the children. It was a sacred trust to her. You're hardly in a position to judge her, are you? You punished her. There's no need to punish me now. But the fact is, she was telling the truth, and that's for you to face, not me. You've chosen the wrong girl. Have I? Will you just bring Eve to me, and we'll find the truth, won't we? I want to know why you were thrown out of school. We weren't thrown out. Alex and I just decided to leave. Why? Please, Grandmother, I really don't want to talk about it. I am it. afraid you're going to have to. What happened? I can't talk about it. She's my sister. Well, since we both love her, we can talk about it, can't we? It's this game she's always played. Go on. I was in the shop, and one of the, one of the cadets from the academy came up to me and started saying how all his friends were crazy about me and that they... Granny said things to me that were terrible. 
Only it wasn't me that he was talking about. It was Alex, and she had told them my name. I... I couldn't... I couldn't stand it anymore. I just had to run away. And there's something wrong with her. She said that if I told anyone that she would kill herself. Maybe she was trying to do something then. I don't know. I just knew that I had to get her away from that school. Yes, of course you did. Please don't be angry with her. No, she's my son's child. I could never disown her. But at least I know I was right in choosing the You, I swear to God. Maybe it was just a wildness in Alexandra that had its day and now it's gone. Maybe some of my my father is in her. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter because I haven't spent enough time with you. you very close to me. Make sure nothing happens to either one of you, darling. Show me the awe. You've done well, Kate. You must be very proud. I am. I only hope that they have marriages as happy as yours. What is it, 25 years now? 26 next month. And I may be the only Frenchman in history who's never been unfaithful to his wife. Oh, Alfred. <laughs> Forgive me, my dear. I was just trying to set a proper example for our young ladies. Will you excuse us, please? Oh, girls, excuse me for just a moment. She must be very rich for him to keep her around. She could use a good plastic surgeon. Maybe he loves her. Oh, Alex. You're still a romantic schoolgirl. You don't believe him, do you? He's a handsome man. He's a count, and this is Paris. He probably has mistresses all over the city. I don't know. I kind of like the idea of a man staying faithful. It'd be fun to find out about him. I'm in love with you, Alfred. Well, this Chateau Cheval Blanc would be perfect for... Said, you said. I'm in love with you. Ever since the first moment I saw you at the restaurant, I knew I had to be with you. <laughs> My dear girl, you asked me here to choose the wine for your grandmother's surprise party. I, I just had to see you again. I dreamed about you ever since I was a little girl. I imagined a man in shining armor who was tall and handsome. Ah, oh, yes, that was me some time ago. Now I'm afraid my armor has turned a bit rusty. Please don't make fun of me. I haven't been able to think about it. Love to me. Eve, this, this is very embarrassing for me. I, I, I do have a wife, you know. Yes. Yes, and she's the luckiest woman in the world. I just wonder if she knows how lucky. Of course she does. I tell her every day. But is she good to you? Does she really know the kind of man you are? Eve, you are very nice. And I know one day you will fight tonight in shining armor. And it will be shining with no rust. Oh, I have 
And I want him. I want him very much. Dear Mrs. Blackwell, I feel it my duty to tell you that I saw one of your granddaughters leaving the Hotel René this afternoon in the company of Count Alfred Maurier. Since no one can tell the girls apart, of course neither could I. I thought you would want to know since the scandal would be of great embarrassment both to your family and that of Count Maurier. Sincerely, a friend. Gran? Close the door, please. Did you have a good trip? What did you do while I was gone? Just a little shopping. I didn't find much of anything I wanted. You already got me most of what I need. Sit down, Eve. What is it, Grant? I was going to invite Alfred Morier here this afternoon, but I decided to spare us all the humiliation. You remember him, don't you? He was at the dinner party the other night, wasn't he? You spent yesterday afternoon in bed with him at the Hotel Rone. Do you remember that? Or are you going to deny that as well? I was hoping you'd never find out what he did to me. Because he's your friend. It was terrible. He, he telephoned and asked me out to lunch. Then he got drunk and... <laughs> these lies about me. Oh, for God's sake, Steve, have the decency to stop. I've been to Lausanne. I've seen Madame Melo. Oh, she, she always hated me. She always did. No more. I love you. It's all over, child. I'm disinheriting you. Monthly allowance. Oh. 